everyone. Today we are going to talk about importing and saving variable data using Adobe Illustrator. The method we are using is by converting an Excel file into an importable data file. There are some scripts out on the internet to do this, but I want to show you the way by doing this only using Illustrator. My personal opinion is that this method is just as easy or even more easy as the scripted method. So let's get to it. As you can see, I created the document with my logo and two text areas. Apart from the illustrated document, we're going to use three things. A site, which links will be in the description, an Excel file, and a notepad file. In Illustrator, we want to link the text boxes to the variable data. So what we're going to do is we're going to Window and we're going to open a few options. The first option we need are the variables. We're also going to open uh, the Layer option. The reason we need the layer window to be opened is because the name is important when setting up the Excel document. As you can see, the layer has the same name as the text that is being displayed. We are making this layer dynamic in the variable window, what means that we are telling Illustrator that this will be one of the layers that contains variable data. Make sure that the text is selected in your artboard and click on the Make Text Dynamic option in your variable window. Now we have made the first text dynamic, you can also add it to the second text. To make sure that the Excel is being set up properly, we are going to rename this into the same name as the layers and the text itself. Now we have set up the illustrated document just right to create the Excel file and import the data. We are going to copy the names of the layers and going to set it as a header in the Excel file. Now that the headers are done, we can import our own data. For this tutorial, we're going to use some sample data. You can also use your own data if you would like. We're going to use 40 rows of data, so we end up with 40 separate PDF files in the end. We're also going to add some uh, example data in the second variable. Just call it second text, give it a number. Now that we are done in Excel, we're going to select and copy the data so we can use it as input for the website that is linked in the description. What this website does is make our Excel file into an importable XML file. XML is the extension that Illustrator uses to read the data it contains. We're going to paste our data under the green header that reads Paste your data here. The second section under the orange header is the data that the site converted for us. This is the data we're going to copy. You can select all the data by clicking on the text. Now that all the converted data is selected and copied, we're going to our notepad and paste it over there. This, the copied data needs to be saved as an XML file. To do that, you're going to choose Save as All Files and name it .xml. Name this, name this document something like import name XML. Here you can see the important part, really name it .xml so it can be uh, seen by Illustrator. Okay, now that we are done, we're moving back to Illustrator. In Illustrator, we're opening up the variable window and we're going to the options and choose load variable library and we're going to search for the document we just created with the notepad. If you get any message about overriding the files, you can choose yes. So there you have it. When you go to the data set, you can see the 40 files we created in the Excel. Now that the file is created, we're going to do the second and last part of this tutorial, and that is saving the document. What we need to do is to tell Illustrator to save each data set as an apart PDF file. To do so, we're going to create an action by going to the window button in the menu and select Action. In the Action menu, you can create a new action. We're going to name this action Create the PDF. Once you hit record, it automatically starts recording. 
So what you want to do now is going to save the document as a PDF file. PDF and give it the name you want. Just note that the properties you give the PDF file will apply to all the other layers as well. Now that the recording is complete, we're going to stop the action in the action window. And we go back to the option button and select batch file. Now what this does is create the same action for all the imported data sets. Now all we got to do is walk through the options uh, of the batch. The action was uh, create the PDF, so we select that. The source are the data sets. Destination must be set to override action and save commands. Now you can choose your destination. You also want to uh, file and give it the data set name. So you save it in the folder you want and just hit the OK button. Now as you can see, it's starting to save all the data sets into PDFs into your chosen folder. Okay, now let's skip this a little bit and go to opening our folder. So as you can see, in the folder all our different data sets are being saved. We're opening a few just to check if everything went okay. And as you can see, 29 opens up 29. You can handle all the files separately, but you also can combine them in Acrobat BC. Just select all the files and right click into combine all the PDF files. In Acrobat DC, you hit the combine button and as you can see all the files are starting to combine into one PDF file. So as you can see this is the PDF file with all the variable data we created today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on some pretty advanced Illustrator stuff. Next up on my channel is splitting and resizing multi-page PDF files. So make sure to subscribe to help me out gaining your knowledge in designing. Thanks for watching and I will see you the next time.